Hey everyone, we're live um, at the Procreate headquarters in Hobart, Tasmania. I've got with me James, who is the CEO, co-founder and designer of Procreate, and I've got Lloyd here as well, our CTO. Thanks for joining us today. If you've got any questions, please jump in in the comments. We've got some guys standing by, they're going to give us your questions and we'll have some fun. Hmm. All right, we're going to take a look at Procreate 5 today, but to get started, James, hmm. could you tell us what was the catalyst for Procreate? What started this all off? Well, the catalyst was really the iPad itself. You know, when Apple released or announced the iPad, that was what kind of got us on the, um, the train of development. And it started out, remember the only day, it started out like a little sketching app. Like yeah. the idea was it was like, wow, the iPad would be a really cool sketching and drawing app. Mm. The interesting part of that was is as we started designing something that was really useful for sketching and drawing, uh, Lloyd was hard at work going through different revisions of um, technology to power you know, the graphics engine. And he kind of hit a point where we could have colors, we had the dual checks of brush system, and uh, it was like, wow, this could make a really nice painting app. Mm. And we, I think we threw everything out, like where we were at that yeah. point. Remember there was, that was like, so much learning going on at the first yeah. bit. Like so many things that we didn't know we could or couldn't do. And as we started playing and experimenting, we found so many things that we could actually achieve and so well on this new device yeah. Uh, that, yeah, it, it changed radically and we threw everything out and built it again, like <laughs> repeatedly. I remember that, Dad, too, because yeah. I remember you and I were talking on like iChat or something mm -hmm. like that and um, we were discussing like, all right, we're going to throw all the interface away, we're going to go and build something that's, um, you know, tailored for custom brushes and we're going to expand this out uh, and we were like, how are we going to tell the other guys? And we are like... I don't know, we're just going to have to deal with it. And we did, we came in the next morning and went, hey, you know that app we're building that's all about sketching? Yeah, we're not doing that anymore, it's, <laughs> it's gone. It's now gonna be a professional level uh, drawing, illustration, painting application. So I mean, they were pretty excited at the time. Yeah, I mean, it's a big deal. We, we like, yeah. broadened the scope so much and it yeah. became so much more than what we originally intended. Yeah. Just from what we found and, and learned over, over time. Totally. But the, I think the catalyst itself was the iPad. Like yeah. the iPad itself was the thing that we were like, wow, this is you, amazing. I remember you coming in uh, and saying that you and Alana had seen the, the launch that oh, night. Oh, yeah, I remember like, that. We have got to get in on this. It's just such an amazing device. Yeah. Mm. And we started thinking about things that we'd want to, to do with it and sketching was the first thing that came to mind. Like, yeah, right away. that's right. Because there wasn't really something... Uh, that was built for professional illustrators. Like, remember at the time, what was that app called? It was like... Um, brushes? Brushes. Mm. So Brushes app was this product uh, made for the iPhone, yeah. and then I think Steve had brought it to the iPad. Yeah, it was more like a blown-up version of the iPhone yeah. version. Yeah, it? okay. It was, yeah. A little, it, was, it was a good app at the time, but it was very simple. It didn't really have a full painting experience like you have in Procreate. Yeah, that's mm. right. It was kind of neat. It was kind of mm. cool, but... Um, it Very definitely simple. wasn't, yeah, exactly. It was really, really simple. And I think it, it lacked all that kind of power, like a, a really, you know, um, structured layered system, custom brushes and all the other stuff that we didn't actually build though, did we? I mean, remember we were no. like, yeah, we can do something way better. But version one yeah. uh, had the underpinnings of that new engine. Like, mm. So, you know, that original kind of dual textured system that, that Lloyd had built. Um, it had a really, if you look at the interface now of Procreate, it hasn't really change very deliberately like as we keep adding stuff to it um we're always trying to protect that kind of overall experience of you know what procreate was designed for it's kind of like if you buy a porsche you want it to be a porsche and even though we're adding all this power and stuff in we don't want to destroy what mm. it originally was intended for it's that's a yeah. very hard thing to do. It Absolutely. is a very yeah. hard thing to and do. And yeah. you, James, as the lead design on Procreate, yeah. um, what's been your driving force about keeping the UI so simple? Because it is. It's really, yeah. it's kind of surprising, I think. A lot of our users, they jump on and they're like, oh, can I use this for you know actual work? Because yeah. it is so deceptively simple. Yeah, I know. We get that a lot. Like yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, it looks very, it almost looks childlike because it's, mm. it's very simply laid out. But I think the thing is that... Um, doesn't matter if you're a seasoned, you know, industry creative or you're just starting out. I think people like to use easy things. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. when things are simple, like a hammer, a hammer is one of the most versatile tools you can get. I, I just, I know how to use it. It's very, very simple, but I could build pretty much anything with a hammer. I mean, and nails and timber and all that sort of stuff. But as a tool itself, simplicity is, is the real driving force. Um, 
Yeah, and as Lloyd mentioned, it has been it has been very difficult to um, stay true to that simplicity because as we uh, get these feature requests, which are you know really important for the development and furtherment of Procreate, it's it's always difficult to uh, remove because mm. anyone can add stuff. Like we were just talking about it before we went live, right? Anyone can go. You want that feature? No worries. You're going to jam in a button there. We're going to do this. No problem. Problem is, as soon as you go down that road it starts um, degrading the experience. And that, that in the software industry is really commonplace. A lot of people are just too, I think, ready to just throw things at the interface where we will really try, and we don't always get it right, but we, we, we really try to um, understand how we can best take that kind of feature, power, and make it simple and easy to use in a really intuitive way. And like I said, sometimes we don't get it right, but we try. That's mm. the main thing. And from a technical point of view, it's the same sort of thing, except as you add more and more things, you can degrade performance as well. Mm. And that's always been a really important thing for us, very important thing, that there be no lag, no um, slowdown in frame rate, that kind of thing, because it, it really, really affects the experience. Because you can imagine the, the hammer example, if it had lag, and you're trying to hit <laughs> a nail, and it, it's just like... <laughs> No, no, hit the thing and it just doesn't move with you. That, yeah. It just would be crazy. So. Yeah. There's a cool gif of that, of some dude who has lag and he tries to like drink water. And, <laughs> and he just pours it on himself. Yeah, and it goes on and on. And he tries to get in his car and start the car and it don't work and stuff. Yeah. If you guys haven't said it, you should say it because it's really good. It's really fun. <laughs> yeah. That's how live streams always end up in gif and meme recommendations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right. Happens. I mean, actually, everything we do degenerates into memes and gifs yeah. like yeah. our Slack channels. <laughs> They're worth it though. I think it makes money. That's an yeah. important part of the way we work. So it looks like we have our first question in, yeah. guys, from the audience. And that is, what do we think about competing against Fresco's, oh, what have we got here, particularly? I think I know where they're going with yeah. that. While we're waiting for the question, <laughs> Fresco is a really interesting app. I don't, by the way, I think it's great that Adobe are coming into the iPad market. I think it's so wonderful that... Um, mm. You know, Adobe are lending a real weight to the platform. I and mean, here we are. We, we jumped on the iPad when no one really understood what the iPad was about. Um, and we've been cracking away, really pushing that uh, envelope of what's possible for professional creation on iPad. So with Adobe coming, I mean, remember when we heard the announcement, like, this is going to be great because uh, hopefully it really validates the iPad as a professional platform and hopefully more people come through. Mm. So the live brushes are interesting. Um, I think, and this is just my personal opinion, you guys might have different opinions, Lloyd, but when it comes to um, simulating traditional media, I think there are a lot of products that have done a really good job at that for a long time. What was that app by um, Corel, the, the big one? Painter. Corel Painter. So Corel Painter's been doing that for years. With Procreate, we very deliberately never tried to uh, simulate because there's products that do that. Procreate is definitely inspired by traditional media. We definitely draw a lot from mm. the old medium, but what we're really interested in is what can digital do? Uh, what's possible with that digital canvas? And mm. leave the simulation of those brushes to um, other products. What I do like though, like fluid dynamics and uh, you know, properties of liquid is an interesting thing, but what would that be like if it was just digital? You know what I mean? Like that is, is far more interesting, I think, than just simulating. Because when you're simulating traditional, you're kind of limited in what you can do because there's a boundary. Mm -hmm. You have to reach a certain point and you, you, you can't go beyond that. Mm. You're intending to re re restrict uh, what it does to the way it yeah. used to work instead mm -hmm. of thinking about what the future might be able to have. Totally. This is the future. Mm. Why not build digital what we is, can yeah. and the best things that people can use mm. totally. is digital. Totally. Well, speaking of the future, maybe yeah. we should dive right in. Currently, the future of Procreate is Procreate 5. Yeah. So tell us a bit about that. What oh, have we got coming? There is so much. You know, we've been working on this for like... Over a year. Over a year. And <clears throat> I'm losing track of how much we've built in because <laughs> it's a funny thing. Like, you know, using... Uh, Procreate 5 for so long and we've been you know living in this kind of bubble of Procreate 5 it always surprises me when we 
go back out and look at Procreate 4 and you're like, wow, okay, there's a whole, it's almost like a whole different product now. Mm. Um, it's so easy to get lost as well. Like we're, yeah. we're, we're working on this for a whole year or, or longer and you just forget what is actually out there and mm. you're, you're surprised, oh, that's right, you guys don't have that. Yeah. You've been using that for a while and, and, and tweaking it and getting it right and it makes a huge difference um, when you actually get to use it. Yeah, totally. it filters down through the rest of the company as well. Um, I'm sure that some of you guys watching have been to events that we've been to over the past year and a bit um, and it does even happen to us like when we've mm. been trying the stuff that you guys are building before it's been officially oh. announced and then we're at events and you guys are like, wouldn't it be cool if we did the thing? And we were like, yeah. Yep. It'd be yeah. really cool because you just forget you forget what's that's right. actually released and what's not. Yeah, that's exactly right. And but if you look at some of the features, like we've been doing uh, animation, which is still nowhere near finished. We've got CMYK, we've got Clone Tool, mm. we've got this guy, the, the the Brush Studio itself. I think a lot of our time has really gone into the engine of Five because there's so much. Mm. Uh, it's an interesting question. So for everyone watching, the question is. Animation is becoming a very cool part of Procreate, and it is. Mm. Are you planning to continue to improve and add more tools for animation? Yes, <laughs> but I would love to talk more about that. It, animation is really interesting to us as a whole. Uh, frame by frame uh, animation, in particular, is is very interesting for, for Procreate. And I think you know what we're hoping to do is keep it simple, though, because. I think one of the one of the really interesting things I've seen, especially when we were like Lightbox, where people are like, "I've never animated before," um, and because this is so simple to use, I'm you know kind yeah. of getting into it. So I think we we want to hopefully preserve that simplicity. Uh, and there's a lot of talk of let's put audio in and let's do this and that. I'm not sure where that's going to go just yet, but for now, animation is a whole new kind of I don't know territory that is super interesting, super super interesting to us. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, and we're always careful and contemplate things pretty deeply about what we do and don't add. Just like we yeah. were saying before, we don't just add things uh, willy nilly. We make sure we we thought about it carefully before mm. doing. It. Totally. Yeah, a lot of that doesn't get seen too because we're always working on the product. We're always, you know, way down in the in the development process. That we rarely surface up to say what's you know what, what's happening, but we mm. do. Oh my God, we talk about uh, every aspect of, you know, the, the feedback we get from social and mm. you know, mm. boards, just always in, uh, always in discussion. You yeah, know? there's heat of debate too. Like, yeah, oh, there's, yeah. there's, this has been some crazy ones. I mean, most of the time it's very, it's very civil, it's very professional, but yeah. we, we can have some very strong debates about certain things. Even just a placement of a button mm. can be debated pretty heavily. Well, yeah. I mean, we debated over live brushes, if you remember, like, should we, yeah. should we do something more simulator? We went into we exactly. went a no, really we've, we've deep uh, discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. More and layers. <laughs> is it possible to have more layers in the future when drawing on a large scale? Absolutely. But watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. I mean, we caught, that's one of like the most number one thing, isn't it? Like, yeah, can definitely. I get more layers? But one of the things that's so important to us is um, performance. And like mm. Lloyd's obsession with performance has pretty much become a cultural thing now where um, we look at the performance of everything we're doing in Procreate, even as the team gets you know bigger, mm. everything must be as quick and as fast as possible. As we were talking about earlier, mm. that is one of the fundamental um, design principles yeah, of an engine. Yeah, it's a priority. Yeah, yeah. let it go. Mm. So, you know, we designed the um, the engine to use everything the iPad's got, and we want to keep it performant. We also want to have our cake and eat it and exceed the the, the uh, memory um, footprint. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing. We've always um, always had that uh, mindset that we would use the device to its fullest. Yeah. Um, so we always consume all the resources we can, but there's also those limitations do cause uh, major technical problems. But that's something that we going to work very hard on. Totally. Yeah. I mean, do you think what we're working with though, like the iPad has four gig of RAM, some devices, and of that, the operating system gets two. Is that right? Is that Rough, two? Roughly one and a half to two. Yeah. Uh, and so we only get two. So we got to do everything we're doing in Procreate with two gig of RAM. Mm. 
and it is a real struggle. Mm. Talking about five, I mean, we did that. That's we did uh, one of the work. most exciting things about five. Is yeah. we'll show you the features like uh, dual brushing and uh, color dynamics later, but uh, to actually introduce those features uh, needed a lot more memory um, yeah, yeah. bandwidth uh, to process it, and we spent a long, long time trying to optimize things so that we didn't actually consume any more memory, even though we added yeah. the features. Mm. Uh, that was basically the major problem. It wasn't so much the feature itself, but with actually the resources yeah. used. Yeah. yeah, a lot of work went into trying to... It's kind of weird, isn't it? Like Procreate 5 is faster and better at memory. It, and yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. Mm. More efficient as well. I think that probably leads into a, a question that I'm getting a fair bit about um, what the future of Pocket might look like with mm. 5 coming out. So obviously we have a lot of uh, users are really, really passionate Procreate Pocket fans. And that's awesome. Um, this Procreate 5 update was for iPad only, but I'm getting a lot of questions about whether these features might make it to iPhone in the future. Now you were just talking about how the memory struggles and things were a challenge on iPads. Mm. So what's that going to look like for iPhone, do you reckon? Well, from an uh, engine point of view, it's actually great news. All that work um, can just come straight across to Pocket. Uh, it actually will work considerably better on the phone yeah. than it used to. Yeah. Uh, so there's huge wins to be had there. Uh, of course, it's not all like free. It doesn't just uh, magically happen. We will have to put a lot of work into it. It's a lot of work from the uh, UI guys and a hell of a lot yeah. of design from the um, product point of view as yeah, well to fit absolutely. it onto the small screen. So yeah, um, technology is, is good for it, but <laughs> there's still a lot of work to go. No, the UI, the phone is such a challenging thing from a UI point of view because Procreate's designed this very specific aspect ratio, and the phone has to be like really thin or really thin, and you've got to put all this power in. So it is a bit of a, mm. a bit of a fight. It's fun though, because you know what's interesting about that is Pocket actually drives a lot of our um, internal kind of thinking about how UI can work. Like we've mm. stolen lots of stuff from Pocket and brought it to Pad because the little guy really makes us kind of. Um, we're forced to kind of rethink how things could work. Mm. Yeah. Um, like if you look at undo, so when we were trying to figure out how we fit an undo button on the little, little guy, we're like, it sucks, there's nowhere to put it, what are we gonna do? And we went back, to like, what about a gesture? And we kind of started working through a gesture. And we were like, what about if we touch the screen with two fingers? And then Lloyd built it, and we were like, this is, this is really cool. In the early days, we were kind of fighting the system gestures for, um, Zoom and pan. Zoom and mm. pan. Mm. And Lloyd wrote a custom, uh, custom gesture from scratch to handle both you know, the zoom and pan and the two finger touch. And it was so good, we actually didn't release it for fun. We brought it to the pad and released it in three. And yeah. yeah, it kind of forced us, you know? Yeah, mm. those sorts of limitations are, are amazing from um, both the UI and the um, technical point of view. Yeah. Because when you get restricted, you get some of the uh, best creativity like using the iPad 1 as an example, uh, back in Procreate 1, yeah. it was actually very difficult to make that device work fast um, because of how you know, restricted you were mm. and limited. Um, and it had 256 meg of RAM oh, that was shared with the uh, operating system <laughs> and other insane. applications. Like, yeah. There was not much to work with, no. but that actually made us more creative yeah. in did, many yeah. ways. I suppose from a feature and UI perspective, maybe developing for the phone is a bit like flipping your canvas when you're doing art you see things from a different Absolutely. that's yeah. a good analogy yeah. actually yeah. that's a really good analogy it does it forces you to really kind of think in new ways which is yeah which, which is nice someone would like to know whether you guys have considered adding canvas texture options we have considered it i think um you know you can you can bring in uh images such as canva tech canvas textures and mm. you know put it in your layers and we try and keep procreate really versatile without making too many very specific kind of workflows because then it kind of limits the flexibility of the product yeah but we, we do want to have you know both in this case so uh we are looking at you know for instance in five i can jump out here and show you here in five when i add a new canvas favorite we've got this new interface here where we can see the dimensions the color profile time-lapse uh, settings and canvas properties. So right now you can set uh, your background color right here. So whenever you start that favorite, you've got that um, color. You can auto hide the background. And in here, maybe there's uh, a spot where we can add a texture or something like that. So it is considered, but mm. uh, 
for five, it, it, it'll probably just be the old fashioned way of bring it in and you know, use it as a multiplier layer or something like mm. that. No. I might just take this second, guys, to also let you know, if you don't know, that if you do have a feature that you would love to see in Procreate, please let us know. Uh, we really love that feedback from you guys, and we have a board on our forums at procreate.art forward slash discussions. It's the ideas and, ideas and suggestions board, rather, and you can leave thoughts and comments on what you would like to see in Procreate for the future for us there. Yeah. Totally. We do actually read that, too. Like, yeah, It's a good absolutely. point to make. We... Uh, Almost every morning we'll jump into the boards and, and have a bit of a read and catch ourselves up on what, what the guys want. Mm, yeah. Definitely. What about yeah. vector tools? What are your thoughts there? I love vector tools. <laughs> what about vector tools? Any chance of them coming to Procreate, do you think? Well, interestingly, text is somewhat of a vector tool. Mm. So, maybe. <laughs> text, text. It really depends on what the purpose is. Yeah. That's right. That's right. It's a really, I mean, yeah, vector is really, really interesting to us because um, there's a lot of flexibility in that. Um, but as a product, Procreate has been designed for that raster mm. uh, manipulation. And I know, like, if you look at what Fresco is doing a bit with their vector and raster tools, personally, I think it's a bit confusing because you have some layers that are vector, some layers that are not. And I think the reason is that they're fundamentally two technologies and fundamentally two different experiences. Like, like I think it's it's weird to kind of put them together, um, but I mean you know Affinity Design is doing some really interesting stuff with with that kind of um, tech. But I think it's a it's a kind of like a technical problem, you know, rather looking, than looking a, for a solution. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think vector is a beautiful um, art form, but uh, I think you know it, it's it's and it's a very it's a very interesting space. Yeah. yeah, like everything, we contemplate it, we think about it, and let's mm. see what you can do with it. And if there's a real good reason for it, we look into it. Mm. Can you explain a bit about what you're doing there with the animation tool? So, James is I'm not doing much. Here, yeah, <laughs> showing off the new animation tool as we talk. Yeah. So, so I guess actually a lot of things I've seen with the beta is um, so this new the Procreate Five beta that was released a couple of days ago, guys had a few UI changes from what you would have seen online previously. So there's yeah. a little bit of confusion about where some of the features are now. Do you want to just run through the animation tool as it stands now? Yeah, so it's got, you know, it's largely simi similar to uh, 4 where it's usually you're just using the layers itself to export the animation. But this little guy down here is where it gets interesting because I've got a little bit more finer control about how my animation works. You can see here we've got the onion skinning and I can turn those down. Uh, I can mess with the opacity itself. You can blend the primary frame, which is really interesting for when you've got a lot of artwork happening on the screen. Mm. Well, you probably talk about blend better because you built that. Mm. So there's issues with onion skinning, but if you have like actual content like fully across the whole canvas, you're not going to be able to see the things that are actually onion skinned with because yeah. you're, you're covering them. So you can turn that switch on. It will actually um, blend even the main frame into those but it's easier to see what's happening and what's your main frame. And if you can, you can turn it off, makes it much easier to see which one's which. Um, but the onion skinning is an interesting uh, uh, bit of tech that we built in-house. Mm. Uh, we played with many different things. It actually took us quite a long time to, to find the right thing. And it came down to the wire pretty much with Lightbox as well. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the last day, I think we were, we were playing with uh, the, the blending still right down to the last day. So on the, on the, um, current one, it will actually figure out from the two frames the uh, bits of content that you actually want to see mm. and show you those and, and get rid of the bits that are the same. So it, it seems real simple, but it's not obvious until you actually start covering mul many, many frames, like 20 odd frames. Yeah. And it's just chaotic what you actually do and what don't want to do. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And right. then obviously those blend modes aren't exported with the actual thing. No. no. So it's only for, for you to see mm. uh, and figure out how the motion is going to step through. Yeah. And then we've got uh, all the other little power here. Like, so for instance, there's my background layer, which is cool. I can set a foreground layer. I won't do this one, but I can show you how to do it. You just tap uh, a frame. And I think that's, that, that's probably some of the questions we've got about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it used to be you would jump into layers and you would tap your layer options. 
Um, but the interesting part about that is that for a lot of people, having those options in there, it's not really relevant for, for just you know day to day drawing. Mm. So it makes more sense that when you have animation assist on, you find that option here to put your foreground on. So that's available for start and end frame. Um, there is some discussion still going on about whether it goes back into the layer op, you know, options and that's an interesting conversation to have. Uh, but we've also got hold duration, which is really cool. So I can you know, step out the number of frames that I want to hold. So here mm. I've got five held frames, which is kind of interesting. And if I play it, you'll see it'll just stop and then move back on. Um, but there's lots of work still going into this that um, won't be visible, I think, until we keep working yeah. through the betas, because we've still got a little bit of time there until um, we ship. Hmm. 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 So we're getting a lot of feature request questions through in the comments here, it seems. Um, gradient maps has been something that's been asked about a fair bit in our community. Um, do you think that that's something that's likely to come to Procreate in the future? We love the idea. That's usually the way we would word that. <laughs> Read between yes. the lines. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it has been, it, yeah, it's definitely one of our most requested and it is a really cool idea and, we, you know, we're familiar with um, the kind of the workflow. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think like anything, like even text tool, I think some years ago we might have wondered why you would need it and then we saw some very good use cases for mm. it. Very important thing to have. Yeah. But there were so many more things that were more important at the time that we had to do. Just the main experience of Procreate was not finished yet yeah. uh, before text came in. But we That's right. Text in mm. but I guess it's like most things, it, it, it's prioritised. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Can you talk a little bit about the development process with Procreate? So obviously you guys are not the whole team. We've got a heap of other engineers mm -hmm. that work on the, on the project as mm -hmm. well. Um, do you, these features, are a lot of them thought up by you guys? Is it a lot of innovation? Do you take on board, obviously, from the board as well, um, customer feedback, that sort of thing. How much of, of each goes into the development process? It's a bit of everything, really. I mean, <clears throat> we can uh, sit down over a, you know, a lunch and kind of discuss, would it be cool if you could do X or mm. be cool if you could do that? And everybody in the development team um, contributes to, to that kind of pool of you know, what would be cool to do. Then we've got the community itself, which is in Jeff, you know, there's huge amounts of requests we get from the community. Uh, and that kind of also feeds back into our discussions mm. about, uh, you know, what we can do with that. Uh, then there's the cool stuff we can do with iPad and Apple Pencil specifically. Mm. That, that's really interesting. We kind of love to focus on what's possible with this. Um, but, and then there's the, the entire Savage company, which also contributes, you know, uh, to the, the brain trust of Procreate itself. Yeah. yeah, and it, it it very much bounces backwards and forwards between both design, engineering, mm, yeah. and the users as well. Like uh, everybody is a part of it. Yeah, that's right. Everybody is a part of it. I mean, we 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 see ourselves as you know we're trying to um, maintain, as we you know said earlier on, the 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 feeling of Procreate, the performance of Procreate, and it is a bit of a juggling act to sometimes mm. get all the <laughs> feedback that comes yeah. at us. But it's fun. Mm, mm. Definitely. I think one of the, the new features of Procreate 5 that has caused a bit of a stir mm. in our online community is the fact that Procreate 5 will be able to import ABR brushes. How cool is that? It's, it's pretty fun <laughs> and it's great for a lot of our users who still have Photoshop as part of their workflow. You know, yeah. They'll be able to use the brushes that they are so familiar with. It's really cool. Totally. But obviously we're still in testing. So yeah. a lot of people have been, not a lot of people, a couple of people have been experiencing that their brushes aren't exactly one-to-one. -one. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to ask them if they could um, help us out find the particular settings that mm. might be a problem. Um, with brushes, uh, it's very much the case that if there's a single setting um, in there that's just slightly wrong, it can completely yeah. mess it up. Mm. It's extremely important everything be absolutely dead right. Uh, so there could be the odd little glitch here and there, but as a whole, it's amazing how many Photoshop brushes actually work perfectly yeah. down to the pixel. Yeah. Um, and so we're working pretty hard on making sure that's exactly right. So if anyone has a, a problem, definitely get in contact, show us what the problem is and yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll find that. 
I mean, we expected it to happen too because it's a pretty big task. Like, what one of the cool things about getting uh, the ABR format working in Procreate is that we kind of had to build a lot of that Photoshop engine stuff into Procreate, sort of. You know, like to accept how they interpret stuff, we had to kind of extend our engine onto that, mm. yeah. um, which has been really cool because now you kind of get the best of both worlds, but with that extra power that we had with Procreate. So. You know, like we're going to do the, the combined brushes thing, which was inspired from the, the fact that we had to have dual brush compatibility. Yeah. Mm. But instead of just, you know, two shapes uh, and a texture, these are like two separate Procreate brushes in play, which was really cool to kind of extend on. on yeah. That. And yeah. we we didn't um, bring in just compatibility. We actually brought a lot of things to Procreate that allow you to actually go a lot further yeah. than you ever could. Mm. Um, and the combined um, feature set is a really huge win for anyone using um, our brush system. Yeah. yeah. Because you can get a lot more power than you ever did before. Yeah. Five. And um, the whole like, if they're experiencing trouble stuff, that's the that's the stuff yeah. that we need to we yeah. need to hear right now. Those fine, yeah. those fine beta. details. That's what oh, the beta yeah. is for. Absolutely, yeah. and that's yeah. why we do betas, guys. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Public betas are so good too because. Um, it really broadens the net for us because, you know, we can be sitting here testing ABRs and all the other stuff, but what we really want to find is all that interesting stuff, like people who maybe aren't selling their brushes online that are using, you know, certain settings that we're not aware of. And, mm. you know, if they're doing uh, importation of brushes into Procreate, let's, let's check it out. Mm. Absolutely. So someone would yeah. like to see the demo of the new color improvement. The new colour improvements. Uh, yes. When they say colour, do they mean the colour uh, picker? There's, there's a lot. A lot I mean, there's a there. lot of things oh, around so colour much. in general. With yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we it. get out of that? We'll start doing CMYK this. CMYK canvas now. We've mm. got the new colour picker. It floats now as well, guys. There's colour history yeah. for certain things, secondary yeah. colours. I reckon we should show the uh, new colour picker. Why don't we the, do this? Yeah. The uh, Harmony as well. Mm. Oh, yeah, Harmony. Harmony yeah. is super What do I mean? Cool. We built all this stuff. Mm. And I just keep forgetting about it <laughs> yeah. now because it's just been there for us for such a long time. So when you create a new canvas, you've got the new color profile stuff here. So you've got RGB and you've got CMYK and you've got a number of different things that you can select from for your profiles, which is really cool. You can also import your own profiles, which is, which is new, it's kind of fun. But if we go into CMYK here, we'll just do generic CMYK. What's interesting about uh, our implementation is, is our color picker itself which they won't be able to probably see here because it's probably not going to work, but it'll show them a CMYK, so a smaller gamut mm. of the CMYK color picker, which is really, really cool. And you can embed those profiles and you can uh, that'll come along for the ride. So if you're printing, uh, that's a lot of fun. The color picker itself, though, I think one of the coolest things is this little guy, the little... Uh, of yeah. course. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's... How long have we had this in, like... On the, radar. the train of things that are oh, in their minds. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we've had like designs of this guy floating around for ages. But what's interesting is like we were going to originally have a lot of things that you could detach from the main interface. But the, the reason why we didn't do that and we focus in on colors is because this one really solves a problem. Because if you're painting, you know, uh, all the time and you're always having to reach for that, the old school kind of popover, it's a lot of taps. So this guy just solves that immediate problem of just having it available whenever you need. But I really love this guy. This is one of my favorite things. I love just like playing with it, which is really cool. But if we go back to the main thing, if you color harmony, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's really, really interesting. So here it's showing me my complementary colors, which is really, really cool. And I can do split complementary, analogous, triadic, tetradic. Those words probably mean nothing, but if you use them, you'll see very, very clearly what they do. So for instance, if I do split complementary, you can see here when I'm moving my primary color, it's showing me, well, here are the other split complementary colors that work for that particular color. So you can get these lovely, like very uh, harmonious balances of color super quick, which is, I, I love it personally because I'm not great with color. So uh, this is helping me kind of figure out how to use color, which is really, really nice. Mm. And if you are familiar with um, how color harmonies work, then you'll just kind of be right at home. We've also got the color history stuff. Um, so that's kind of useful. If you clear, it'll just kind of erase them, which is nice. 
And then every time I use a color, I can expect it to uh, appear back in my history, which is really, really nice. Mm. Really simple stuff, but... Uh, Makes a huge difference in the workflow. It does. Yeah. We've still got some work to do on the Color Harmony too, I think. We're still... Actually, yeah. it does just work everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> We've still got four weeks to go. So, you know. Yeah. I think the floating color picker for me was the dark horse when using it. It's not something that I ever thought that I would use in my workflow. I was like, eh, that's fine. Started using it recently. It's cool. just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really Everything interesting watching watching people using four um, version four and all the previous versions. And you see, like, do a thing, get a color, do a thing, get a color, and it's yeah. just it's it's only like that far away, but it makes all the difference because it's mm. just a long way. Tap, change, and that workflow is just so much slower than when you just have it right there. You just, yeah. Beep. I think a lot of our users as well had kind of defaulted to making their own little color palettes and having it on a background layer that they could just yeah, color pick no, from. Yeah, yeah. Little, which little hacky workarounds. Hacky workarounds. Yeah. I love hacky workarounds. They're great. It's cool but, though. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. The I love the color, color dynamic stuff though. This this stuff really gets me going. I love yeah. the little stuff here. I think you can this do. is potentially my favorite feature. It's incoming. pretty cool. I'm obsessed with it. Like yeah, it's cool to experiment in a color. Uh, color dynamics area of the brush studio because you can do these like I don't know psychedelic stuff I'm doing here now but uh, it's very easy to control you know how much you want and I love that you can get just really 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 cool interesting effects lovely bits of texture straight away mm. interestingly we had this working like a year ago no because no one cleared it would have been original. over a year um, yeah it was even before 4.3 but it was held back um, yeah for some technical reasons but um, we were talking about memory usage yeah this actually is one of the most expensive yeah. features for memory usage um, and I won't bother boring people with the details but we spent a very very long time finding some room to, to fit that in yeah yeah I can imagine. yeah that was tough mm. But you can do some interesting stuff with color dynamics too. You can assign it to pressure, which is really interesting. If I get something just simple to kind of demonstrate that, like the round brush, and go into color dynamics and get some pressure, you can do these really interesting kind of effects. That um, it's really interesting how how it can work in a in a workflow. You can see here it's kind of a bit trippy, but you can see now with pressure that stroke will start varying through the uh, through the color which is really interesting but there's so much you can control here like yeah. uh, I could probably spend like an hour just going through the, how the oh, color dynamics absolutely. work and tilt and the pressure and lightness and darkness and stuff but I'm really looking forward to making those tutorials fun. for you guys because there's yeah. a lot of stuff to go through I think one of my one of the coolest things with the the color dynamics brushes was a demo you did briefly at Lightbox James when you were doing your talk mm. where it was this um it was a foliage brush Mm. And you had oh, yeah. the color, you had the hue and the size of the brush connected to pressure. And so you're just drawing along and you oh, pressed yeah. it, it exploded in size and also in color. But yeah, that's really right. Cool. You can do interesting stuff now because that, that's the other interesting thing we didn't mention. That's what I mean about stuff. It's too much stuff. So much. Too much. But, you know, if I'm drawing here and put some, some color on that so we can see it. Oh, we've still got color dynamics on. Okay, cool. We'll work with that. Um, this is the really cool part of five that we still are figuring out and yet to really talk about. This is cool. This guy can do so much. And in the studio, we've mapped what pressure and tilt can do. So it's no longer just like size and opacity. Mm. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. So if I go into Jitter and I tap the numeric uh, keypad here, you can see you've got the numeric entry, which is cool. You can put in a precise number if you want. We can also set tilt or pressure to that, which is really cool. So if I go to pressure here and make a little little curve uh, and I smash that all the way up, you can see that it's kind of interesting how that's playing out. At the moment, the curve is I'm immediately going to apply jitter. So what I can do is I can ramp that down so that it doesn't apply jitter straight away. And then what you can do is you can get these really kind of interesting effects of a little bit of stuff, but then when I press harder, she'll really start exploding out. And we really couldn't do that kind of stuff before, um, which is interesting. Now, there's, whole, there's a whole host of other stuff, almost everything you can map pressure to. So I think we're expecting, you know, if you're a brush maker, wow, you're gonna have a whole lot of other mm. stuff there that you're gonna be able to do. Um, and if you're not, if you're just kind of messing around with brushes, exploring stuff, 
I reckon they're going to do stuff that we didn't really even... Well, that's it. Like uh, We've added see. it to so many uh, places. Uh, you can't really predict what someone's going to do with that. Yeah. yeah. And it's actually been a, a somewhat of a philosophy we've had with all of our brush creation. From before we even knew we wanted custom brushes, we had every single setting available to ourselves. Yeah. And we played with it. And we're like, this, this has got to be... This has got to be a part of our brush system. Yeah, everyone needs to be able to play with this. Yeah, um, and figure out brushes for themselves. That's going to be it became our thing. Huge, I think, when this comes out to everyone, the brushes that come out of this are going to be absolutely insane. Yeah. But while we're talking about brushes, if you want to go back into the studio, James, it mm. might be cool to show our viewers the dual brushes that we were talking about briefly. How earlier. convenient! We're uh -huh. on one. <laughs> yeah, this is really really cool. Um, so with the new brush studio, it's, it's pretty simple. You've got your settings on the left and then you've got, uh, you know, the modification of those settings and then, and then your preview. The dual brushes itself is so interesting because we, as I said earlier, you're getting two separate brushes and then putting them together. Mm. But it, it's more like one's inside another. I mean, from an from yeah. engine point of view. I mean, it really depends on uh, just here. You can see the uh, blend mode that you can mm. select. It can change up how it behaves. Like, oh, we've, we've got our own thing called normal here which would sound like it was normal, but it's actually quite unusual. Very unusual. Yeah. Uh, in dual brush systems, typically it's one is limited by the other. We made it possible that you could actually have things spatter out uh, about, so you can get like nice charcoal effects. Yeah. Um, where Why don't we make one? Of, let's go and make yeah, a brush. Let's do it. it. Let's go and make a brush. But yeah, it, it can be all kinds of things. You can, you can add one which does one effect and another which will then subtract away. You can have, um, like I said, the normal where it adds to it. You can have all kinds of un really unusual features to a brush, and it often comes from pressure and yeah. and all the different dynamics that we have. Like streamline, you could do like one with like mad streamline, the other one covering. Yeah, it and they can they can move around like independently. It's it's really unusual, but very effective as well. Yeah. Mm. Such an incredibly powerful tool. I think some of the new brushes that are coming with the Procreate 5 update are making use of these dual... Oh, totally. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. Different blend but modes a, between a them. A set that's um, full of dual brushes. Mm. Yeah, there's the new artistic set and, and the other, uh, the draw, new drawing set. A lot of those are actually um, dual brushes. But I'm, I'm, what I'm doing here, I've just imported, it's like, uh, we did, I did a bunch of scans for the Procreate 5 brushes. So this is just one of those scans. And you can see it's, it's just doing a really simple kind of scatter nothing nothing crazy um, if I ramp the size up on this guy so she becomes really big get some nice lovely kind of textures to that I can add some color dynamics onto it because why not it's always fun because we're doing a splatter brush so that's cool so we've made a, our little brush um, but for a jewel brush we can we can add kind of like a secondary splatter brush to get some really interesting kind of effects so that's just one brush but if I duplicate that brush, for instance, and go in here, um, why don't we change that shape? So I'm going to import another, another splatter in here, something, something different. Maybe While we're going through this, James, you've guy. created all of Procreate's brushes. Yeah, uh, yeah. we do have some uh, community brushes. We have one from uh, our good friend Nico, uh, Narinda, and uh, Jonathan Biskinski. But yes, the rest of them. Yeah. Mm. I'm the offender. Um, so here I'm going to make a secondary brush, different sort of um, shape for this one. And we're going to leave some of those other effects on. I'm going to go back to this guy and maybe give him a grain as well to make it extra interesting. Oops. Oh, yeah, we've got to show that feature too. <laughs> so much. Oh, there's so much. <laughs> Let's forget. just do it. I know. All right, what are we going to do for this guy? Why don't we do something interesting? So a lot of these are just scans. I just had a lot of fun. Uh, out in the main area with paint and stuff everywhere, scanning in, making all these kind of cool textures, but just choose something interesting. So here is just a raw scan that I've done with um, from an art board and some acrylic. Now, previously when you're making your Procreate brushes, you had to figure out a way to make the, the, uh, the grain auto repeat. Mm. So that might've been jumping out to another product to do that and bring the grain in. Don't have to do that anymore. You can just take a scan or a photo or whatever you like once it's in the grain editor here, I can hit this button up here called Auto Repeat, and we're actually stitching together the uh, the tiles, so to speak, to make a seamless grain, which is mm. really cool. Saves a lot of time, and I can mess around with this. I can make the the mask hardness stronger. I can make the grain scale bigger. 
For this one, I might just do something interesting like that. I can even rotate it. And when I get done, it's gonna create that texture and then it's gonna push it back into the brush. Uh, and I'm gonna use textured as a mode or not, because there may be a bug with that. <laughs> we are going to use normal for this. Excellent. <laughs> So you can see we got the, this is also cool, the new blend mode picker. I can scroll through that and I can see how that texture is going to push through. This is really good for experimentation. Oh yeah. yeah. Something that would have taken you like a good five seconds to switch between one is now instantaneous. And you can just let it scroll until you find the one that looks just right. Yeah, yeah. So that one looks interesting. I'm gonna do that. So now I've got these two separate brushes and they're both doing interesting stuff. I've got a little bit of a scatter. I have no idea how this brush is going to look, but we're going to do it. I'm going to combine those two. So much the same in layers as you can select um, two layers and then do some cool stuff like grouping or whatever. Same paradigm, just grab the two brushes, hit combine. And now that little guy just went into this brush and we have a dual brush. But Or oh, we're calling them combined brushes. I don't know what we're going to call them yet. I think it's combined brushes. Name pending. Hmm. Yep, I like that. Name painting. So now we've got this guy. So tool brushes, and we're going to paint them both at once, and you can see get these really interesting kind of effects. But th this this is a, just a really basic kind of example of how that could work. Mm. Um, you can do so much more with how the dual brushes work. Uh, you could have, as we were saying before, you can have one shape, maybe decorating an actual stroke, kind of moving through it. Uh, again, I could spend all day here just messing around making uh, different brushes. But you don't need to also make dual brushes uh, to really get the cool power out of the new Procreate 5 stuff because just the new settings alone of just having like for instance these new blend modes, uh, the rendering modes, so much cool stuff around the new blending modes. Lloyd, remember the, the wet and burnt edges stuff? Yeah, you, some you, new edging. Yeah. Um, it's really exciting. It's, yeah. It'll find the edge between either the dual and secondary, uh, uh, the dual brushes. It can find the edge, it can find the edge on just a single brush as well. And you can change the blend mode just for the edge and get very interesting effects, especially something oh. like multiply. So you can have yeah. a normal brush, but with multiplied edges, which can get like a real burnt, wet feel around the edge. That's cool. Um, yeah. Wet edges is um, uh, an interesting one as well. It can change like the opacity so that the center of the brush can get quite clear yeah. and almost glassy. Yeah, That's, there's so much just like, you don't need to miss uh, you don't need to always combine brushes. There's enough. No, in there's here a too. lot, especially with color dynamics uh, and all the blending modes. Yeah, yeah, and all the new tilt stuff. And yeah, there is so much in here. We're, we're developing the new uh, the new resources um, thing. You know, the whole thing, mm. the handbook thing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's taken a while because it turns out there's a lot that's going into uh, the brushes itself, but. Procreate's always been about the brushes. So like five was always gonna be like, remember from the outset, we were like, we we have to embrace the fact that Procreate is essentially a collection of brushes that mark the screen and, that, and that it's a tool for, for artists. Mm. And that's where we really put a lot of our time with the, the engine upgrade, uh, the new interface changes. It's all about the brushes. Yeah, It's always gonna be our focus too. Absolutely. Making sure that core experience is <clears throat> right. Exactly, yeah. Mm. Will Procreate 5 be end? It'll be out before the end of the year. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let it hang for a little while, man. Uh, um, make him sweat. Yeah. Yes. Oh, God. Oh, look, we'd love to release it now, but I mean, you guys just saw I couldn't swap over to the texture thing. Like, there are little There's a bugs things that, yeah, that, yeah, we're still, you know, for the scope of uh, a little team, you know, for 30 people punching out, we've got. Procreate 5 was a really ambitious project mm. and maybe we bit off more than we could chew. You know, a year ago, we, we kind of went, wouldn't it be cool to, we'll do CMYK and Caladamics and we'll do clone all the tool. thing. Clone tool. Oh Secondary God, yeah, clone yeah, tool. I forgot about tool. clone tool, yeah. Um, it's like the unsung hero. Mm. And like all that stuff is just, it's just a lot of work and we're almost there, but we still need a bit more time before mm. we can mm. we can find. We've been going right. absolutely flat out, and we will continue to go flat out until the <sighs> end of the year. Some of us like <laughs> some of us are here till like uh, past midnight uh, regularly to like two in the morning because we really want to get this done. We really want to get it uh, out to out to the, the fans and get them, get them using it. Mm. Yeah. We're just as excited as you guys are, right? <laughs> uh, I could, <laughs> I think, maybe. Uh, 
Yes. So we have a question about the clone tool here, guys. James is going to show you the clone tool and he's going to show you how to lock it. I'm going to and while make he's some doing eyes. that, Lloyd, we had some people in the comments asking about where you put a shirt and can they have one, please? Mm. <laughs> limited edition. It's, it's very limited. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think this is Super a pretty old, run. pretty old shirt. Um, <laughs> not sure if they're going to be made again. I don't think they are, but um, yeah, this is, is uh, this is um, one of my good. 10, I think I've got, <laughs> and I'm going to hold on to them to deal with. <laughs> Lloyd's I. got the entire run of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Merch is something we get asked about a lot, guys, and it's, yeah. it's definitely something we're interested in doing. Um, just to make things more difficult for myself, I think there's currently a pin giveaway on Instagram. Mm. Oh, you're going to do it like here? Go you're going to tell them? Oh, oh my gosh. I like causing pain yeah. for myself. It's fine. <laughs> Um, pin giveaway, guys. Go to yeah. the comments, tag your friend who might like a pin, and you've got a chance to win one for yourself. So, there. What are we doing? Lock, locking Locking. Right. Lock. So, I've got the clone uh, adjustment up, and I can move my little reticle, but I want to put more eyes on everyone. So, <laughs> if I just hold down on the reticle, you'll see it bounce to say it's locked. And I don't know if this will work, but it will. Cool. So, everywhere I draw now, you get an eye, you get an eye, you get an eye. Everyone gets an eye. Very, very simple to use. If you want to unlock it, same method, just touch and hold the reticle itself and you'll see a little notification saying it's unlocked and you're free to start cloning away again. Really, really, really simple. Really, really simple. And the clone tool works with the brush textures and everything, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. 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 I mean, you just tap here and you've actually got the entire library. I mean, this is going to be weird. <laughs> I'm going to use my splatter brush. I don't know what's going to happen here. Let's do it. And we'll lock it to the eye. Do all the things. Uh, just cleanse it. Yeah, cool. I mean, there you go. Really, really simple, but very, very effective, especially if you're doing a lot of concept art where you want to get really kind of, you know, textural brush yeah. strokes in. Just use your brushes. Everything works. It all, it's all really, really simple. Mm. Yeah. That's uh, definitely another design philosophy we have. Whenever we um, bring in a new feature, we want to make sure it works with everything else properly Good and that it will not be restricted by just being this one little thing off to the side yeah. Yeah. Uh, which actually is making it very hard for us because we have to make sure everything works right and not everything can just work together easily but no. it is well worth it agree yeah it's definitely well worth it mm. takes but that's kind of our job isn't it mm. that's what we're that's, that's what, what we do that's what we're paid for to kind of work on this stuff yeah i'm just going back to my little animation i want to try and get <clears throat> some lighting in on this. I don't know what it's the I'm not a very good good artist So you guys are going to, have to deal with the fact that uh, It's not going to be anything amazing, but I think the animation thing honestly This is my favorite thing my favorite thing we've done in ages and mm. we've been wanting to do this for how long? Years years <laughs> Now I think, I think I think it was uh, uh, So exciting when we did the um, uh, export where we just exported layers but yeah, you couldn't view it. You couldn't, you couldn't view it, but still, that was so, so big and such a huge change. Yeah, it was so obvious that we had to make the timeline, really, from then. Yeah. I remember even at the time, people were questioning whether or not... It was worth we doing. Should, yeah, yeah, why are we doing uh, the layer export thing? And it's like, it's cool. I think it'll be okay. And that went well, but it was clear we had to make it even better. Mm. Yeah. Are there any watercolour brushes in Procreate 5? There was one brush called Luma. I think Nate made it. I can't remember. Someone made a watercolor brush and it was pretty cool. Yeah. But again, it's not really a, um, not really going down the path of simulation. With the new stuff uh, and the new engine and the new studio, you can make some surprisingly uh, interesting brushes that do have an analog back to watercolor. Mm. Um, a lot of our settings uh, are able to replicate yeah. Uh, traditional media pretty well. Yeah. Um, but it isn't really our focus. Mm. Co correct. Yeah, it really isn't. But you, guys, you could jump in there. You could have some fun um, and try and make your own. And I think I think you guys would be able to make some interesting brushes. Yeah, themselves. for sure. We'd really like to see what you guys <coughs> can make. So be sure to tag us. Yeah. If anything super cool, totally. let us know. Send us it in the DMs on Instagram. Yeah. Mm. All of that. Yeah. On the boards even. Yeah. We've got actually a um, resources board on Procreate dot where you can share brushes and things that you've made for Procreate, um, color palettes, even the canvas backgrounds that we we're talking about earlier. If you've got something really cool that you think looks good for a textured background, you can share it there. 
that's yeah. a place where our community can kind of come together and share the cool stuff that they've made for Procreate. So definitely do that if you've got any cool brushes for five. Yeah, I think there's already there's already some excitement about um, people making their own custom brushes like uh, Max. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do some cool stuff. He's doing some really cool stuff. I yeah. can't wait to see what he comes out with yeah. for five. Yeah, that should be cool. And there's also um, Bardo brush. I know there's heaps of people. Oh, doing. heaps. Do you remember when we were at Lifebox? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay. We can That's do that. Fine. That's fine. But um, remember we were at Lifebox, and like in five minutes, Lisa had like something amazing and yeah. we're like how, do, how did you do that and it's like when the developers of procreate are saying that that's that makes me really excited like there's going to be some really cool stuff i think that's going to come out of that yeah the i guess we go back to the hacks and stuff again the hacks that the community come out with sometimes are just constantly amazing to me yeah they've often driven that, some of our features too yeah we'll see it and go, well if they're going working around it that hard then perhaps they might actually need go. this feature <laughs> give them the thing <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's nice. We've just been told that someone in the chat is gifting Procreate to another user. Oh, that's lovely. That's so nice. That's nice lovely. work. I hope you, kudos <laughs> to you. Good fortune to you. That is cool. <laughs> that's really nice. So how are we going with this animation? Oh, What's happening it's, here? It's not great, but <laughs> don't judge me, Georgia. I'm just going to keep doing this thing and... I just honestly though, I'm just having fun, like kind of messing around. Mm. It's it is it is kind of pleasurable just to draw, and because it is it is really really simple to do. All I'm doing is just um, giving some glow to this little blobby thing that's kind of moving around. So I how think are you like, actually doing that? Because a lot of people ask about glow and lighting. Okay, really really simple. I'll do the next the next layer. I'll just do a quick play to make sure that I haven't derped anything up. But my little blobs bouncing around here. There we go. A little bit of glow. Nothing major. I'll probably go back through and give them some more glow. But basically what I'm doing here, I'm, I've made my, my base loop. Mm. Uh, and now I'm kind of going back through every frame here and adding some glow. So I'm duplicating the base glow here. And then I'm putting it up next to that frame. Then I'm grouping that frame. So when you group a frame in Procreate 5, that's considered a singular frame in the timeline mm. really really small detail but really really handy um here what i'm going to do is he's probably clipped a little bit but i'm going to move him onto the center there so he's roughly in line i think we have a bug again with freeform i wonder if i can restore it no nothing i'm going to move it along there and i'm using add mode as my main method of um adding that luminance add is such a nice way to add luminance um so if here i go make a new layer and I'm going to go and just draw some directional lighting, just something on there. But I'm going to use add mode here to, and you can see I've got the new blend mode picker, which is really cool because I can kind of run through what that's going to look like. Mm. Probably, kind of nice. probably one of the uh, best points of it. If you don't know which mode to use, probably just yeah. cycle through them quickly and you'll, you'll quickly see which ones. Exactly. Which. And you've got that serendipity too, because you can kind of go, oh, that, I wasn't expecting that effect to do, yeah. you know, that. So that's kind of cool. It's yeah. really cool. So I think yeah. the blend modes are something that not a lot of our users touch, or our new users at least, they don't really touch them because it's difficult to tell what they're going to do. They have and very the arcane names great. as well. They, they do. do. They do. And the handbook's great, and it's been really good, but without actually seeing that visual and having potentially totally. explain that what's happening, it's a bit tricky to know exactly what's going on. Mm. Yeah, it is a, it is a little, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, for the professional uh, industry, it's necessary to have that kind of naming convention. But yeah, it is a little, a little strange, I mm. think, for some some people. But that picker, I think, will go a long way into kind of helping identify what those kind of effects actually yeah. translate into, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure which is going to end up, but it's the only thing I could think of to draw, mainly because I'm so tired from all the development we've been doing <laughs> the last couple of weeks. It totally has been, mm. it's been pretty massive. It has been pretty massive. Yeah, we might have to add a little bit more glow to that as we continue on. But I want to add a little bit of sheen to that kind of bottom surface, which could be cool. So I'm using that combination of like messing around with the timeline itself and layers. And that is kind of how we, we're hoping people will use it. You've still yeah. got all the, the power of layers. Like there has been some talk about, can we do more in the timeline with layers? But I think one of the beautiful things about why it, um, simple frame by frame animation can remain simple is if we do actually keep them separate so all that really hardcore 
power of having a structural tree with the blend modes and the clipping masks and the layer groups and all that, it's already there. We don't have to dupe it. You mm. know what I mean? It's just it's just easy to, yeah. to jump into there. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. What about other platforms, guys? So Procreate is on iPad, it's on iPhone. Mm -hmm. Have we ever thought about putting it on other platforms? Like Oh yeah. Mm. Mac, a, a lot of Windows, discussion Android. about that. Mm. <laughs> Lots of discussion. We want everyone to use Procreate, really, but <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, we don't really have a, uh, a bias, except for the fact that there are some, some technical reasons why we have stayed on iOS, mm. and other platforms are really, really interesting to us, but iPad is really such a special platform. Like, it really, really is. Like, let's say we, use, we talk about the Mac. The Mac is a... Is a Beautiful platform that we use daily as developers. Um, great deal of power. Great deal of power. Lots of heritage. Mm. Lots of heritage. Lots of cool stuff. We use them to develop this. We use them to develop this. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool platform. But this guy, this guy really make for a beautiful combination that, yes, you have, uh, you know, the Wacom Cintiqs, etc. But in, in my opinion, I don't know, maybe you share the same thing, but mm. this is better. It just is. It, it is just, it is more precise. It is more intuitive. Much uh, better responsiveness. Much better. I mean, they don't really talk about the responsiveness. You know, we talk about like, there's like 1024 levels of, uh, you know, pressure sensitivity, but this thing has... It seems to have an infinite, infinite amount. I'm sure amount. it doesn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we haven't yeah. found a limit. Yeah, we don't know. But that's the mm. thing. We haven't found a limit because it is just so precise. And even having the screen, like, you know, it's laminated towards the glass. So you don't get parallax. Mm. Um, it is a really a mobile device. Like, you know what I mean? Like mm. it is a, a true mo mobile experience. And, and don't forget the whole point of the iPad. You're actually touching the thing. Totally. You yeah. see and you are pointing totally. at the thing yeah. that you're doing. So like the gesture, that's a really good point. Because like gestures are like, if you took gestures away from Procreate, I think it would suck. Because just this stuff of like zooming in and moving, two finger touch to undo, quick menu, mm. all that goes away. And then we have to figure out a, a, a different methodology, which means we're kind of not, we're not procreating anymore. Yeah, not who we are. Yeah, yeah mm. we're something else. Um, other tablets, you know, that they're, they're interesting, but the reason why we haven't gone to Android or, uh, you know, Windows Surface or any of those kind of guys, mainly for the fragmentation issue that we have on it on Android. Um, from a UX and from a technical point oh, of view. Man, both tough. Both ways. Like this is yeah. custom built for iPads and iOS mm. and phones, uh, iPhones specifically. Whereas if we started splitting out to different technologies, it drastically increases the amount of work. It also reduces, like you have to work for the lowest common denominator, mm. which isn't good for everyone. It's yeah. only good for the lowest common denominator. Yeah. Um, and it's the same for UX, it's exactly the same. And the fragmentation that you were talking about is horrible from a design point of view because you have to deal with so many different problems that mm. just wouldn't matter for this device for example yeah. we put 100 percent effort into every single device um, category that we have mm. yeah and it, that's that's a lot of work yeah it is i think procreate 4 currently runs on any ipad that has ios 12.1 or higher so that's what mm -hmm. i had totally to. Uh, enough, Mini 2 sure. and yeah. Air, Air 1. Yeah, well. yeah so we, we do cover a lot of devices. Mm. We do. But be, being um, really focused in on one platform really does allow us to exploit the power of the hardware more so than uh, if we were spread thin across many platforms. Mm. Mm. So, <clears throat> you know, it took us a little while to, maybe a couple of years since this guy has been a thing, to go, wait, what else can we do with that? Mm. What else can this specific device do? Um, and like leveraging the power, I mean, Lloyd has been, you know, deep in the, in the Valkyrie engine for a while, really turning every setting up. Yeah, yeah uh, well, to just, just on that, like yeah. the, the color dynamics comes specifically from using the latest features of these devices. Mm. Yeah. That's why we are uh, limited to iOS 13, yeah. because that covers the device set that um, can handle that. Um, and those really features we, we look for, we wait for. We can use them, obviously, you can't mm. use them straight away necessarily, but uh, in this case, it is the right time and we need that feature. 
Yeah, so I think it's yeah. important to note, guys, that when Procreate 5 does come out, it will require iOS 13.2. Mm. So you will have to update, um, but totally worth it, I mm. think. I think so. Mm. I think, you know, 13 brings some cool stuff, and I think the, the latest updates are making it um, quite accessible now. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. My little ball, ball has some more lighting here. I'm almost done. <laughs> Always. What I do like, though, is um, the frames per second stuff. I can crank this right down. Really cool for storyboards because you can kind of really step stuff through at a yeah. really slow rate, which is nice. Or if I crank it all the way up, you can get these, <laughs> <laughs> these uh, like crazy, clubber. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of cool to see it all happen in, in real time. And I can still like zoom up on my canvas and stuff, which is weird whilst it's playing because you just kind of see moments of the animation flash past. <laughs> but it is, very, very simple and nice to use. It's coming along really well. There's still some, actually, still lots of way to go, but it's coming along. It's finally, mm. finally coming along. We're at least at the tweaking stage. Yeah, it feels like that now, mm. doesn't it? Because we were, oh man, we went down, like when we went to Lightbox, there was a really simple uh, interface that allowed you to animate, and we got really good feedback. So it's just, oh, I love it because it's just so simple. Yeah. Cool. Then we got some feedback uh, from some friends at Disney and DreamWorks, and we were like, um, Okay, yeah, we'll figure out how we can make that workflow also a thing. We went away and we started redesigning. I was like redesigning stuff. It was like, you know, opening up the hood and just throwing out cables and tubes <laughs> and stuff. And just did this whole other new timeline. And we developed it. And we, I don't think anyone spoke about it, but I think we all felt the same. Like, it's a big crap. Uh, and we threw it all out, like only like last week. Started again and then redeveloped it and redesigned it into this, this really simplified timeline. And I think what we learned was is that um, making something really, really simple is, goes back to the heart of what Procreate's all about. Really, really simple stuff. We kind of might've went a bit too far, putting all these features in and stuff, but wait, it's really hard to use. And, yeah. it, and it's not, not everyone can just jump in and just start uh, making silly blobs move around the screen. Mm. You know, so this new timeline is a good example of all of that stuff of how we try and design and develop Procreate. Super simple, super easy to use, super versatile. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. I can see five minutes left. Yeah, we don't have long left, guys. If you've got any last minute questions, please send them through in the comments. Yeah. Um, otherwise, James is going to finish up on his animation. And I don't think I'm going to make it. Not going to make it? I'm not going to make Ooh. it. I'm just going to admit defeat. I'm going to keep going here, guys. But <laughs> to give it a shot. Might take this second, guys, to just also remind you that the art prize finishes today. Yeah. We're very excited about it. We've got some cool entries that have come in. Um, it closes in ooh, about four hours and 15 minutes ish. So 5 p.m. AEDT today is when it closes. So make sure you get your, your um, entries in before that point. There's been some cool entries in this Yeah, one. some really cool entries. Yeah. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what happens. Mm, me too. So the the prize page is at procreate.art forward slash prize. If you go there, you can upload your work. Um, just upload a flat image, guys. We've had some questions about the time lapse thing that was required. Um, just upload the flat image. If the judges require seeing your time lapse, we'll ask you for that specifically. You don't have to upload it then and there. All good. Yeah. There's a fatal flaw in my animation. There's a surface, but he's exceeding the surface. <laughs> Oops. It's okay. Whoops. Look, I'll just demonstrate. You can just stop everything and delete the frames. God, I hope that works. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is going to work. Let's try it. Start deleting frames. Yes. It's all good. There we go. It's actually cool. I don't have to close the popover. I can just do this. Take it back to there. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's much easier. Not a good example of when things go well. <laughs> We've got something come up here. I think that's. I think they're Closing trying to tell time. us. They're, they're trying, trying to tell us, us that we're, we're over. Stop. Yeah. Stop it, guys. You didn't make Stop. it. Dude. No, you didn't, didn't finish in time. Look, this is it. It didn't make it, and I'm not finishing it. <laughs> 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 but there we go. Uh, half finished. Yeah. All good. 
Thanks very much for joining us, guys. It's been awesome to have you here when we did our first Procreate Live. We're hoping to do a few more of these into the future, so definitely stay tuned on our social media pages and get in touch if you have any questions, feedback, anything like that. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you so much.